Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> We're doing something a little different on the channel today. I don't know if you guys know this little facet of my life. Something I really, really love is true crime. It's become much more like popularized as an interest in the past couple years with the rise of podcasts like My Favorite Murder, who I am obsessed with, Criminal, This Is Why We Drink, like there's so many. And also just like Netflix really loves true crime stuff. Like I don't know if any of you saw the Hotel Cecile docu-series or the, the Night Stalker docu-series or anything like that. My love for true crime came from <laughs> when my mom and dad would both be working in the summer and my brother and I would watch a lot of TV. We had two different TVs, so I had the TV in the little office and he watched TV out there. And I used to watch the E! Network and the E! Network has this amazing series called E! True Hollywood Stories. They have different sections of it. So E! True Hollywood Stories about Britney Spears, E! True Hollywood Stories about Michael Jackson, E! True Hollywood Stories about women who kill, E! True Hollywood Stories about serial killers. And I just became so interested in the serial killer ones. And I think that that even got sparked from this trip that I took with my mom to Alcatraz. So anyway, I have been a fan of true crime for a very, very long time. One of my favorite podcasts ever, which I mentioned before, My Favorite Murder, in episode 32, they covered something I had never heard about, which is the Zanku chicken murders. I'm sure all the vegans in the comments will be like, every chicken eaten is a chicken murder. That's not what I mean. What I mean <laughs> is there is like a very sordid past behind this beloved Southern California chain. And I kind of want to dive into that today while we eat Zanku chicken. Now, what I've been trying to figure out is, is this morbid of me or is this creative? Hopefully, we all think it's creative. I am getting basically all of my information from the My Favorite Murder podcast, Karen Kilgariff tells this story, and she got most of her information, which I also have read this article since, is the Los Angeles Magazine article written by Mark Arax, or Arax, back in 2008. It's called The Zanku Chicken Murders. So here's the thing about Zanku. They are very, very, very famous in like Los Angeles culture, for having just like the best roast chicken you can get. I believe the LA Times quoted it as the best chicken in Los Angeles at any price. I got the half roast chicken and some hummus, some veggies, some cucumber salad, some pita, and the thing that made Zanku so famous, the garlic paste. Oh my God. So let's dive in. Wow, I'm so excited. Now let's start where it all began. Back in Beirut, Lebanon in like 1960, there's a family whose name is the Iskandarians. Of this family, there is the dad. There's a dad whose name I can't find right now, but he is Madrios's dad. Madrios Iskandarian is going to be the main character in this story. His mother, Marguerite, is the person who invented this world famous garlic paste. So, Back in Beirut in 1960, the Iskandarian family starts what's basically a drive through before there's even drive throughs They have a little storefront, but in the storefront is where they prepare all the food, all the chicken. So people basically just go to the storefront to pick their, like pay, pick their food up. Like nobody sits there. They just come to eat this amazing food. And it very much is amazing. Then there's a civil war in Lebanon in 1975. And a few years later, the Iskandarian family moves out to California, which I don't know if you guys know this. In Glendale, California, which is on the east side of the valley, which is where I'm from, there's the highest concentration of Armenian people that are not in Armenia, like outside of Armenia. So they moved to Glendale and the Iskandarian family, which is Marguerite, the dad, the son, Madrios, and the two sisters, they are like, cool, we need to like work hard start a business, stay together as a family. And Madrios is like, well, why would we not just keep Zanku going? And the family was like, ah, uh, restaurants are too finicky. We don't wanna, we don't wanna have to worry about that. Like, let's do something that's, that's for sure. Dry cleaning, men's suits, da da da. So they try these options and it's just not working. So finally, they give in to Madrios' idea and they're like, okay, we'll open a Zanku chicken here, but we're a little skeptical. They didn't need to be because it popped off. 
In the first two years, they were making like a million dollars in profit every year. Like it got so popular. Everybody loves Anku chicken. It's such a thing out here. Like you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who has lived in Los Angeles for a while that wouldn't know Zanku chicken. So Zanku is popping off. Everyone loves it, super popular. Marguerite, the mom, wakes up every friggin' morning and makes this garlic sauce from scratch, her own personal private secret recipe. She's making stuff happen. She's very important. She's so important to Madrios that he has he had been heard saying, next to God is my mother. Loves his mom so much. Madrios is also married to a woman named Rita, who we'll get into in a second. But he and his mom are so close that like when him, Rita, and his mom would drive places, his mom would sit up front next to him and Rita would sit in the back. And so this guy is just beyond fatal for his mom. Loves her so much. Also just growing up around a lot of Armenian families who I love dearly. L family loyalty is super important. Treating your mother with respect is of the utmost importance and Madrios did it so much. Like gave her lavish birthday parties at churches and just treated her with, with so much love, so much respect etc. Loves his mom. Madras and Rita met back in Beirut. Rita had been like absolutely fatal for him for years and years and years, since she was like 12 and they got together at 19. Madrios is like 26, whatever. So, so we have Madrios, Rita, and they have four sons. Their sons are named Dikran, Steve, Ara, and Vartikas. Oh, that was the, that was the grandpa's name, Vartikas. So Rita and Madrios have these four sons and they all live in a house in Glendale with Madrios' mom, who he loves so much. She lives in the master bedroom of the house and she doesn't have anything in her room really except one picture of her and Madrios from back in Lebanon, back in the 60s, of them like being a cute mother and son together. They open Zanku, it's going like gangbusters, everybody's obsessed. Pepsi Company offers them $30 million for the trademark of their name to start expanding their stores, like to take Zanku under their wing. And Madrios is like, I definitely want to expand. I think they say no to the offer at Pepsi, but Madrios is like, likes the idea. So he's like, I do want to expand. We only have the one store on Sunset in Normandy, which if you live in LA, you know where it is. But if you don't, it's like in East Hollywood. They were just in like a little shopping center, but doing super, super well. So Madrios is like, let's expand. And again, his family like pushed back and they were like, you know, it's just like, we do so much. Your mom makes this garlic paste every morning. It's just, it's already so much. We're doing well, why would we mess it up? Madrios cajoles them, cajoles them, cajoles them, finally convinces them to expand their stores, but only under the pretense of him saying, you guys can have my whole stake in the Sunset and Normandy store. Whatever I do opening new stores, I'll either win or I'll lose. They'll either do well or they won't, and that's on me. But like, we're still all a family, everything's still fine. Everybody's like, okay, fine. Also, just so you know, Rita, Madrios' wife, has never worked at Zanku. She is a stay-at-home mom. She takes care of the house, things like that. And Madrios has two sisters. One of them is involved in Zanku and stuff like that. She has two sons. So, so Zanku's going like gangbusters. The new shops that are popping up are doing fantastic as well. However, as you could imagine, when you make so much money so quickly, things can get a little tricky. And for the Iskandarian family, that manifested itself in Madrios's four sons, not quite being as like work oriented, if you wanna put it that way, as their dad. They were not doing too hot in terms of like where you might want your sons to be. One of his sons, uh, his youngest son was like 17 and just kind of like doing drugs here and there. Wasn't like too crazy, you know, he's 17, but still wasn't ideal for that family. One of his other sons was like into kind of harder drugs and that was a little tricky. Then another one of his sons was going into law school but cheated on an exam and got kicked out of school. Then the other son got charged for attempted second degree murder because he shot at a car which had some people that he was dealing with in. So each one of his sons kind of has something going on that isn't ideal. But they're his babies, he loves them. But unfortunately, somewhere around the year 2000, Madrios Iskandarian gets some very unsettling news. 
He had been complaining of pains in his abdominal area for a very long time, and when he finally goes to get it checked out, we find out that it is inoperable bladder and brain cancer. So, Madrios Iskandarian is suddenly very, very sick. And now we know why. Even in the wake of this horrible news, you know, he's created this empire of restaurants, of this chain of really, really beloved restaurants that have very good food. And with that, he knows that he has to figure something out. He's very sick, unfortunately doesn't have a lot of time left, needs to get some affairs in order. And again, he's incredibly close with his family, incredibly close with his mother. So he calls a family meeting in their home in Glendale, which the four sons, Rita himself and his mom all live at. Everybody is hearing this very unfortunate news that Madrios Iskandarian is very, very sick and something's going to need to happen to move the business forward. So he sits everybody down and he says something along the lines of, okay guys, here's what's up. I'm really sick. I'm not gonna be around for a very long time. I'm not gonna be around forever. We need to figure something out in the event when I pass away. Everybody's obviously very shaken, very upset. And he says, what do he need? And he says, what's gonna happen is my four sons are gonna take over. And everybody's sort of like, what's up? Do you know the sons you're talking about? Like, and the dad, Madrios, is just like, this is what's gonna happen. End of story. This is, this is what's gonna happen. These are my restaurants. I will do with them what I wish, blah, blah, blah. So Madrios' mom, Marguerite, she looks at him and she says, in Armenian, she says, your sons, they do not cast the same shadow as you. Basically saying like, this is a mistake. They're not you, they can't do this. Like, they're not good kids, basically, is what she's saying. And then she gets up and she walks upstairs and she does not say another word to Madrios for a full year. Full year, she's not talking to her son who just told the whole family, I'm dying, I have inoperable cancer. So within this year, Madrios is getting sicker and sicker, unfortunately. Rita is taking on more responsibility, not with the business, but just taking care of her husband and, you know, things are getting sorted out, etc. Then one day, Madrios is so sick and tired of his mom acting this way, he goes up into her room in his house and he takes that one picture that she has of her and him and he rips it in the middle with her and him now ripped apart. He sets fire to her half and he crumples up the half with him in it and throws it away. He's obviously livid. He's just so hurt by his mom. He loves her so much. She hasn't talked to him for a year. He's really, really sick. He's lost 60 pounds. He's lost his hair. He's like not doing hot. Rips this picture up. Two days later, the house that they all share, Madros, Rita, his mom, their four sons, mysteriously catches on fire. Such a bad fire that the firemen have to go in and rescue Madrios and Rita. Like they weren't able to get out in time without the help of the firemen. Allegedly, people throw out the idea that the mom set the house on fire, Marguerite, but that's never been like proven or anything. So we'll leave that there. But everybody gets out in time, everybody's safe, everything's fine. The mom, Marguerite, goes and lives with one of the sisters. She lives with the sister who has the two sons. Still not talking to her son, Madrios. So, now it's just Rita and Madrios. The, mo the mom is not living there anymore. Madrios sicker and sicker, still not talking to his mother. By the time the house is renovated, Rita recalls Madrios walking down the stairs in a white silk suit that he hasn't worn in 20 years. She remembers him looking beautiful, glowing. However, we don't know if this is actually the case because when everything was fat, when we find out what happens later. He's not in that. So it might've been kind of like a vision or something. What we don't know is that tucked inside his pants and his jacket are two guns. He has a nine millimeter and a 45. But Rita just sees him walking down the stairs looking like a vision. And she says, you, you look so good. What are you doing? You haven't been up in, in so long. And he says, I feel so much better. 
I'm just gonna run down to Zanku to see an old friend. I'll be back soon. And he leaves and she goes, okay. Which I always thought was interesting because I'm like, your bedridden husband is just like walking around and you're not like, let me go hang. Anyway, not her fault. I'm just surprised by it. But he doesn't go to Zanku, as I'm sure you could imagine. He, imagine that's the story. I'm like, he went to Zanku and then unfortunately he died peacefully in his sleep. He doesn't go to Zanku, he goes to his sister's house, his sister with the two sons. He goes to his sister's house where his mom is staying. After he sent, okay, here's what's interesting. Remember, Madrios has inoperable brain cancer, fluids in his brain, stuff's going on. People had recounted that he had been saying some crazy stuff, acting very odd for a bit of time. And on this day, he told Steve, his, his son, go to the mall, get me one of those slushy iced lemonades that I like. Because that's the only thing he still liked the flavor of in his sickness. So his son goes. That's when he tells Rita, I'm leaving, goes to the sister's house, gets to the sister's house. They chat for a couple minutes. He says, hey, we gotta talk about some family stuff. His mom here, Marguerite walks in. So they all sit down and this is when stuff gets a little crazy. So if you have a weak stomach or heart, I would not listen. They're talking for a few minutes. Madrios pulls out one of the guns and shoots his sister in the face. She falls down to the floor dead. The mother screams and bolts for the door. He blocks the door. She says, please, in Armenian, she says, please don't shoot. He shoots her in the head. As she falls to the floor, he shoots her eight more times. One of his sister's sons had been on the stairs staring, watching this all happen. He looks at his nephew, his mom and his sister are both dead on the floor. He walks over to the couch, he sits down and he shoots himself in the head. So three people are dead. There is a witness to everything that happened, his nephew, the housekeeper downstairs had let him in and everything, but she didn't see what happened. Steve gets back home from the mall. Rita says something happened, something happened at your aunt's house. You have to go check. So Steve bolts over and is informed that his father, his aunt, and his grandmother are all dead at the hands of his father. So that's the story of the Zanku chicken murders. <laughs> the article goes into such beautiful detail and is so well written. And it kind of, it tells what happens with the rest of the restaurants and what happens with them and da da. They're clearly still operating. This happened in 2003, in January of 2003. There's obviously a lot of legal battles. Then Rita has to take over the whole thing. She's never worked at Zenku Day in her life. Da, 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 da. It's just an absolutely heartbreaking story of this sick son who made a bad decision that the mom didn't agree with and this like rage grew. And it was just like, this story just blew my mind. So I just wanted to share it with you guys because wow, Again, I know that this is super far off from the normal kind of stuff that I do, but if you are interested at all um, in seeing more stuff like this, I love talking about it. I love eating, so maybe we can combine something with these two. Let me know, and if you hated it, let me know too, but be nice, I guess. <laughs> and I hope you have a great day.